and we are live ladies and gentlemen welcome to toe the line with me george glinsky joined today by the bkb heavyweight british champion fighting for a world title at bkb 26 against jody meekle on the 11th of june it's daniel podmore how are we doing i'm all good my man yeah very good very good you must be <sighs> buzzing with the news that you're fighting for that world title it's been long overdue well, yeah, it was a bit touch and go uh, at first. Obviously, um, you know, I was hearing a few things, you know, on the grapevine and stuff, and saying that, you know, that certain someone was getting it again before me. But yeah, it was, it's a bit of a, a bitter of a relief now that uh, it's. I found out that it's me, which, which <clears throat> to be fair, in Jim and Joe, you know, it's, it's only fair. You know what I mean? I'm I'm number one. Simple as that. So. <laughs> Yeah, and there was there was debate, obviously, as we say, Dorian Darch and Mikkel for at BKB24. We'll just take a, a little step back there to the injury itself. I believe it was a, was it a lat injury? What was it that, because you originally set to face for the world title against Dorian Darch and you became injured. Mikkel came in, defeated Darch, and now he's the world champion. So what exactly happened from your perspective? Uh, <clears throat> basically, um, I had... Ryan Barrett come down for sparring and I had Noah Burton. I don't know if you know Noah Burton. <clears throat> He's um, Tyson Fury's cousin. Yeah. He's one of my main sparring partners. Uh, and I was, I must have been waiting, waiting uh, to get in there. And I, I just jumped on the bike. And because I was in a bit of a rush, you know, I sort of like didn't warm up properly. Mm. And, um, and I got in there with Ryan. And he'll back my story 100%. Um, we started having a nice little spa. And then I threw a jab mm -hmm. and missed. Or he checked it. Sorry, yeah, he parried it. And then he pulled, I pulled my lat. Mm. Right? So I tried to carry on. I was like, oh, fucking hell. So I've tried to carry on. and But then I threw another one with, in, like, with intent. And then, which actually... Uh, Done, done the damage, which actually, like, yeah, give me a, a grade one strain. Mm -hmm. uh, it was from then, I couldn't throw a jab. I couldn't throw at all. It was like my, my body was stopping me. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> I had to knock the spine on the head there and then. Um, I said, well, you know, we'll uh, reevaluate for next week. So, so I um, rested it, had a bit of acupuncture on it. Mm -hmm. I had uh, numerous physio appointments on it for uh, Mark Sincox, one of my, sp my sponsors. Mm -hmm. And he'd done his very best to uh, to get me back in there. But then the next week, I tried to spar again. It felt good. I was hitting the bag, hitting it hard. Um, as soon as I missed and overextended with the jab, it pulled again. Um, Simon... The first time he was worried, saying, oh, this is too close to the fight, oh, blah, blah, blah. I said, now listen, I ain't pulling out. Mm. This is There's no chance of, I'm, I'm ever pulling out, ever pulling out of a fight, ever. I've never have done that in my life, right? He says, oh, we'll have to reevaluate then next week. So, so we did, and then it happened again. And then, you know, I've sort of half like pissed off with myself. I was like, fuck's sake, you know what I mean? And then, I was speaking to my physio and, he, and apparently um, Gamal Yafai had exactly the same injury and it took and he, he was sort of like half playing it off saying, yeah, you got two to three weeks recovery time. And this, there was three weeks before the fight. Yeah. So I says, okay, then I'm going to carry on training, keep the fitness up and I won't punch for three weeks. Mm -hmm. right? And I'm, and I'm going to fight. I'm definitely going to fight. I seen Simon there. So he's all like, hmm. And then he pulled me to one side. He said, Dan, it's, it's, there's no point in you ruining your shot, right? Over something that could go into a fight with the likes of someone, uh, you know, as special as Dorian Darch. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you fucking, you got no chance. Absolutely no chance I'm pulling out this fight. Absolutely no chance. And me, me and Simon got into a bit of a, like, a, a heated debate sort of thing. Yeah. Um, I was just like, I can't fucking do it. I can't do it. I've sold the tickets. You know, I'm still selling them tickets. I said, I can't do it. And, um, but then I spoke to Mark Simcox again. He goes, you know what? The likelihood of you recovering in time is, is, is borderline, right? He says, it took Gamal Yafai six weeks to recover. Mm. 
Mm. And I said, I just haven't got six weeks. So then Simon was like, listen, you're still in the same position that you was. Okay, you're still number one. You're still next in line. He says, "What? What's gonna, what's gonna hurt you by putting the fight off and then doing it again a couple of months down the line or a couple of weeks down the line?" So it basically, it, it's like he says, "I can't let you fight." Then he said, "I can't let you fight." Mm-hmm. So it was his choice to pull me. I said, "I, I had no other option." I was like, <clears throat> "Well." And if he's, he's, you know, I'd rather, if, am I going to do, go and fight with one arm and have not have Simon in my corner and, you know, go against his wishes? And I was like, nah, I can't, I ain't going to be able to do it. So I'll be, I, you know, swallowed me pride and I fucking, I'm about to pull out the fight. But it was, it was Simon that pulled me. I didn't want to pull. He'll tell you. I said, I will fight with one hand. I will fight with one hand. And he, uh, in the end, it's just, we just, we just called it and we just thought, you know what, we'll come again. It, it, and then <clears throat> by the time fight night, it was, you know, I was kicked myself because I felt like I could have fought. But, you know, I'm saying, like I said, I'm still in this. I haven't lost nothing. I haven't lost and I haven't won. But I'm still in the same position that I was before the injury. So, and now we get to go again. Yeah, exactly, exactly. How difficult was that realization, though? You know, you've, you're you coming into the biggest fight of your career, the world title. Is is it what everyone dreams of, and then it gets taken away from you so cruelly, so close to the fight? Well, <clears throat> let's just put it this way, right? I trained from June, right? I got fat again after this after after the Charlie Milner fight, right? I got fat, blew, blew back up to nineteen and a half stone, right? So I started June getting the weight off, getting the weight off, getting the weight off. And was was fighting in January. So I had a good six, seven months camp, right? <clears throat> you know, you, you prepare yourself for war. That's This is the only way I can put it. You know, you prepare yourself to, to, to get in there and go to war. Mm. And then when that gets taken away from you and you can't go to war, you know what I mean? I mean you just find yourself like, a bit lost and... Didn't know what to do. So I was like, oh, I've got all this aggression in me and I'm ready, I'm ready. I want to smash someone's head in. And I, I just couldn't, you know what I mean? So I've been like that now since January. So every training session I have, I do, <laughs> I'm like, Argh. I just want to kill someone. So I'm ready to fight now. I will. I could fight tomorrow. I'm fit, I'm strong. You know, I'm, I'm skills are on point. I could fight tomorrow. But so... I've been ready. I've been ready. I am ready. So come June, um, I'm going to feel sorry for the person that's standing in front of me. It's as simple as that. I'm ready to go. And there's, there's no much more I can say than that. You know what I mean? It's, uh, I haven't been able to release the, um, the you know, the, uh, I haven't been able to release it. So I've just been able to, I've just got to carry it. So now I'm, I'm desperate. I'm desperate, chomping at the bit. I'm desperate to fight. And, and fight you well, as I say. So, Jordan yeah. Meekle is, is the man holding the belt. He defeated Doran Darch via a, it's a cut, I believe, below the eye. It was a, quite a nasty cut. The fight seems at least to be swaying Dorian's way. And then, obviously, what happened happened. And, and now we're in this position. Is, is there a little bit of disappointment that it isn't Dorian Darch? Obviously, I know you've had your fair share of back and forth. It would have been nice to, to maybe settle that. Well, this this special guy, you know, that no one wanted to fight. Mm. This absolutely special person in of a guy that just got his head caved in for a living. You know what I mean? Thinks he's superior than everybody else, Mr. Dorian Darch. Yeah. Showed his level to me on that fight. He showed his level, right? So him be believing that he's above everybody else and this, that, and the other. Like I said, anybody could go get sparked by an AJ. Anyone could go get sparked by Daniel Dubois and all the big names that he, you know, he's fought. So any man can do that. Mm. So for what for what, what, what I've seen on that fight, I mean, I sat there and looked at Simon. I was like this, looking at him while the fight was at. And all the people in front of me in the in the in in on the table turning around to me going. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I should have took the fight mm. one handed. You know what I mean? I guarantee he wouldn't laid a wouldn't wouldn't have laid a hand on me. Guarantee. 
<clears throat> and even me, you know, with one hand, I reckon I still would have beat him. Mm. Like I said, he showed me his level. I know where I'm at. And we're not the same. We're not the same. So I was disappointed that I weren't in there. You know, I did, you know, I, I kicked myself. Like I said, I had the whole front row in on the table turning around. Even the guys that sponsored the show, them, you know, did some of them DRS guys, right? Just turned, I was speaking to them all night. You're saying, oh, pod, you're smashing. You're smashing. I said, mate, you know, what can I say? Mm. I sat there and I was just like baffled. I was like, this was supposed to be that special guy that I was supposed to face, you know, that was supposed to, you know, everyone's scared to fight. I said, well, who's he fought? He fought Mason Shaw, that Mason Shaw's not even a heavyweight no more. He's like, what, a middleweight? Mm. So he had to, he ballooned up for that fight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And obviously, <sighs> Dorian, oh, I'd say he was a proper heavyweight, but he's not even a proper heavyweight. He obviously carried the power. I know that Mason Shaw can punch. You know what I mean? I've been there with Mason Shaw and he can punch. Yeah. But punching at 80 kilo and then punching at 110 kilo is totally different. So mm. I think that was the, just the difference. I think the weight was the difference. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? There's maybe if Mason was 110, his punches would have been different and they would have felt a bit different. But I think punches at 80 kilo or 90 kilo, whatever it was, right? Um, they just don't affect someone that's a genuine bigger guy. You know what I mean? So like now, I've I've, I've fought bigger guys my whole the whole career. To be fair, even if, if whatever level, mm. um, and I know, you know, I can walk through most anyone anyone's punches. Mm. So it's I think that's basically what it was. About, you know, Dorian just walked through his punches. And he got off a sort of someone his, but like I said, he wasn't a heavyweight. Mm -hmm. And then when he, he he had a fight at heavyweight for the title, he choked. You know what I mean? It's to me, he, what was he 16 stone when he fought Mason? Yeah. He looked like he put the weight on and he couldn't carry the weight. He, he come in at 17 and a half stone. He looked fat, he looked slow, he looked sloppy. Um now me at 17 and a half stone, it's totally two, two different ball games. Mm. I'm fast, sharp, fit. You know what I mean? He looked like he was blowing his fucking out, blowing his his ass off in that ring. You know what I mean? He, he looked at, he looked unfit. He looked, he shouldn't have been in there. That's what that's how I felt. You know what I mean? It, 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 he only hit Jody with a, a, a few punches. Jody was, you know, he's got he's got a a bit of ring craft and a bit of um, boxing IQ. Mm -hmm. So even when it was moving out of the way of the punches. And then it was countering some. And then he got cut. And then Jody worked the cut. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I don't see how you can call that, you know, a close fight. If you know, if someone's thrown a, a punch at you to hurt you and it cuts you, that is a legitimate way of losing a fight. Mm -hmm. So so I say if I punch you in the face, George, right? And I cut you. Hopefully not. <laughs> say you was whooping me. You know what I mean? And I worked the cut. And you stop it. That's a legitimate way of that's a legitimate way of losing. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. It's, it's true. It, it's caused intentionally. I'm intentionally throwing this punch at your face, mm. and my knuckles are going to cut your face intentionally. Mm. Yeah, so <clears throat> so I don't see how he's you know he was lucky. It wasn't. It didn't even. It was, you know. It maybe have been winning. I had, I had Jody win the first round. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Yeah. Dorian won the next two. Yeah, and what was it then? And then the fourth, he stopped in the fourth round, and then that was, you know, Dorian, Dorian panicking. You know, he was panicking because he had the cut, so he looked sloppy. But then Jody used his brain and fucking countered. It's one of them. So I don't see how he was so ahead on the on the on the on the on the uh, on the on the, on the scorecards. So Loki thinks he is, because I don't think he was. I want to say that they actually gave, I haven't watched it back in a while, but I think they gave every round to Dorian up until the cut. I believe that's correct. I think I think Jody won the first round. Um, and I think, I'm sure actually on the scorecards, you know, listening yeah. to the commentary, they give Jody the... Cut, yeah, the cut, I remember, I'm trying to work out, was it the commentary they gave him? The, I think the commentary gave him yeah. the first round and they were a bit surprised when the judge the yeah. Dorian. I, it's been a long time since I've seen the fight, but I think that's correct. So I've, uh, obviously I was there live, I was watching it. 
it wasn't great. So, but then I had to. I've watched it back numerous times, and they've said, you know, that you know, just give it a equal. Yeah. So, for as much as you weren't impressed by Dorian in that fight, were you impressed by Jody? Obviously, he hadn't been in the ring for five years. He comes in there and he, and he wins a world title. It's a pretty, pretty impressive achievement. Exactly. For someone that's took the fight on two weeks' notice, he mm. come in and he'd done the business. Mm-hmm. And no matter what me and Dorian have said, you know, with our little back and forth on the, you know, the Instagram, whatever, because everything he fucking says has got my name coming out of his mouth. You know, every post, you know what I mean? It's like he's obsessed. So whatever I say to him in regarding to Jody, whatever, you know what I mean? It's just, that's nothing like against Jody. You know what I mean? I know what, I know Jody's background. I know where he's come from. I've known, I've known him for years off the circuit. You know what I mean? So I know what he's about. <clears throat> and I know that if Dorian was sleeping on Jody, then Jody would have, was going to win that fight. Some, something in my brain thought, you know what? Something could go wrong here. And it did. Mm-hmm. So, Fair play to Jody. You know what I mean? He come in and he done the business. You know what I mean? And I, and I was the first one to congratulate him. You know what I mean? I was just like, well done, mate. You know, you fucking, you smashed it, to be fair. Mm. So, <clears throat> and it was, that was basically it. It's just, you got beat. He needs to take that out, right? Come back again, re, re you know, reevaluate himself. Mm. You know what I mean? If, and he's talking about fighting me or fighting again for the for the world title. I said, listen, you don't get title shots off losses. You've lost. Take the L. Go get a win behind you and then f- come back to fight for the title. Mm. So I, don't, I, I can't see how he's walked into a, 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 a title fight. Right? I can't. I can't. That, that has baffled my mind. Mm. I mean, there's... Yes and no. I mean, there, it's not a particularly strong division. Obviously, you've got Mickey Parker and Carl Hobley have just fought. Ricky um, Nell has gone now. So I think the division itself is is weaker and Dorian's got a good name behind him. Ryan was deserving of a shot. So I, I like the fight. It, you know, he takes that step down. You take that fight. And then in my head, I don't know if you're of the same thinking, then Dorian, providing he beats Ryan, if not, you know, it throws things into the wind, but if he wins, then he gets the the shot of the world title. Would, would that be the logical progression for you? Well, if he wins the British uh, cruiser, yeah, you know what I mean. What's if I win, right? Um, <clears throat> it's one of them. It's if Mickey vacates, I think there's no reason why we couldn't put them both on the line. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If, Mickey, if, if obviously if Dorian wins that and there's a world title online, I've, it's one of them. It's welcome up to heavyweight. I'll come down to cruiser. You could make yeah. that weight. You think I would make that weight? Yes. Listen, you're going to see a different, um, a different Daniel Pod more come June. Let me mm-hmm. just tell you that one. Like right? just like in physique and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. you'll see. So, like I said, if Dorian wants to fight, why make it heavyweight? Right. I'll come down to Cruiser, right? Where he should be better. Yeah? Let's just put it that way. Okay, okay, that's exciting. That's exciting. So, Jody Meikle first, of course. He's your he's your next opponent. What let's, threats let's, does he... Let's forget fight? about Dorian, Dorian. Yeah, I was going to say... We're 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 my right now, okay? It's, it's good to talk Dorian. about Dorian, but we've got to, we've got to talk yeah. about Jody now. So, um, yes. what threats do you think he poses? Obviously, he's got incredible ring craft <laughs> and many times before he's fought equally highly skilled opposition. So, he, he is a threat. Of course, obviously he's uh, he's been around the block. So I, he's, I say he's got a, he's a very good ring uh, ring IQ, uh, very good ring craft. Um, <clears throat> so it'd be like I won't say I'm a young lion, but fuck you know, um, <laughs> young versus old. Yeah. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm coming to the prime. I'm like some. You know what I mean? It's um, it's one of them. It's anyone could be a danger. In Bernhardt, like I said, it takes one shot. Um, people keep saying to people keep like, people saying like, I'm not going to be able to finish Jody, but taking shots with gloves is taking sh- is different to taking shots with bare knuckles. Mm-hmm. Now, 
Jody was a, a journeyman at what weight? Light heavy, or was it middle? Light heavy, middle. middle, I believe, yeah. yeah. So now, taking shots by them sort of guys is different to taking shots at heavy, you know what I mean? So, well, that's just my philosophy anyway. So, I know Jody's had a few fights at heavy, you know, on the white collar circuit, but let's just face it, it's not at the level where, you know, it should be, sort of thing. Mm. So, so, I've done the same thing. I've fought guys on the white collar circuit where I've took I've took the house and stuff like that, and I could have finished the fight. I could finish the fight any time I wanted to. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm hitting guys and hurting them. I might have to slow down. You know what I mean? Sort of thing. So I know what Jody's about. He's and I'm I'm sure he knows what I'm about. Mm. Or does he? Because uh, I'm going to be bringing another level to my game mm. um, come June. So it's one of them. It's <clears throat> I say, can a old dog learn new tricks? You know, can someone sit in their ways, be taught something different? Mm. Is it going to work against someone the likes of me that's improving every single fight? You know what I mean? It's um. <sighs> We're about to find out, you know what I mean? It's uh, can the old dog handle what I'm about to bring to him? Mm. And someone that's raring to go, and I'm like, seriously, I'm, I'm been this desperate to fight in a long, long time. I am one hungry guy, you know. All my, all, all my stable mates, they're having fights, and I'm sitting there and I'm trying to be happy for them. And, you know, they're having wicked wins and this, that and the other. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, wicked lads. Yeah, yeah. But then, you know, so I'm saying, you can see you're hungry. I'm saying, yeah, I've got battles because I want to be in there myself. I want to be in there smashing people's faces in. Mm. I'm not, it's been, what, 18 months? It's been a while. It's, it's not ideal. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let's talk about your stable mates. Obviously, it's as per usual at Fitness Factory. It's a it's a you know a whole group that are fighting. So Eric Olsen against Simon Sinkovic and Ryan Barrett versus Dorian Darch. You're you'll be I assume sparring both of those guys that are around your weight. How are they looking? And um, your thoughts on their their next fights? Well, I'm not gonna fucking I'm not I'm not gonna say anything about how who looks who and this and that, but I'm just, let's just say, it's, uh, they, they will be ready to fight. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not going to say anything. Obviously I'm not about to say, <laughs> say much, you know what I mean? But it's, um, like I said, we will be ready. All of us will be ready. Everyone, we're always ready. It's Fitness Factory is, I'd say by far the best bare knuckle gym in the country. Yeah. If not, if not, if not the world, I'm telling you, mm. because we breed champions as simple as that, right? You've got me, you've got Khan, you know what I mean? You got Ryan's, Ryan's there. He's, he's come down. He's he's fighting now. He's fought what twice. He's fighting twice now for a, a title. Ricky, you got Trez, mm -hmm. John Hick mm -hmm. as well down there. Well, John so, Hick, uh, I actually want to I want to touch upon that. John Hick is back in training, I believe. John is yes. Um, when he when he'll be fighting, I'm not too sure. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's it's one of them. It's I think we, I know Anthony Holmes said he's you know Casper's got a, one of the best gyms and you know to come out for the for the bare knuckle and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. I think we are the best. We are the mm -hmm. best by far. Yeah, you know what I mean. Titles talk, you know, uh, talks volumes, doesn't it? Speaks volumes to all the titles that have come back to Fitness Factory. So. Mm. Yeah, Birmingham's first world champion. Mm. June second, no, no, June eleventh is going to be number two. So <sighs> I can't wait. For it. I really can't wait. No, I can feel that energy. That's the thing. It's, you know, fight nights. What eight weeks away? But you're you're raring to go. It's early in camp. Obviously, we hope no injuries or anything get in the way of this fight. We pray for that, obviously. Um, but for those who are thinking about buying the card, they might not have done it yet. 
why should people tune into this card and why particularly should they tune into your fight? Well, in my opinion, this is probably the the very best card that's ever been matched on BKB. Okay. I think BKB 26 is going to be full, jam-packed of action. You know, you've got the likes of Lowell, McGraffin. That's going to be... People are thinking, I think people are sleeping on Dan McGraffin because yeah. Dan can fight. Mm. So you've got Anthony Holmes, you know, he's, he's, he's a slick operator, you know, every time. He's a multiple champion. So... Mm. Uh, this Nathan Leeson and Murray again that's going to be a, a good one because Nathan's actually trying you also got Barrett and Darch mm. I think you know Darch could be sleeping on Barrett let's just put it that way um, if anyone look, it's, all I'm going to say is that their, Ryan is very 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 heavy handed and soon, if he touches a Darcy's face with his tracing paper skin, yeah. it should be it's good not Irene. Really, you know what I mean? So <clears throat> anyway, for the rest of the cards, there's you know, it's, it's just I can't wait to watch them myself. Yeah. You know, as a as a fan myself, you know what I mean? But if anyone's gonna tune in, it's gotta be for my fight. You got it's gotta be, you know what I mean? It's 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 my time to shine. You know what I'm saying? I think people have been waiting a long time to see me lift that belt. Mm. You know what I mean? It's, I'm getting a more and more new support. It's um, it's very refreshing. You know what I mean? It's very, it's, it's overwhelming. The amount of people that, you know, are wanting to support me now. I get messages daily and, you know, people are asking for like sign photos and stuff. And this is just from little old me, Dan, Dan Podmore from Bartley Green in Birmingham. You know what I mean? So, it's mad. It's <clears throat> but if you want to see, you know, some proper skill now, some proper skill, that is the fight you want to watch because none of these. I don't think any of these heavyweights now are going to have any anything for me. I'm telling you. I think my my um, the, the I'm, my game now is just it's leveling up. It's leveling up. That's all. That's all I can say. So, <clears throat> it's uh, yeah. So if you, if you ain't got a ticket, needs a buy a ticket or buy the pay per view. It's as simple as that. Because if you don't, you're gonna miss out. Hundred mm. percent. This is by far the best BKB card that's ever, 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 ever taken place mm. across all promotions. Any promotion, we are the top dogs. Yeah. We always put on the best fights, the 50-50 fights. And, you know, we are the best. You know what I mean? It's, it's one of them. It's... Oh, it's just, oh, it's, I, just, I just want to get in there, George. <laughs> oh. yeah, I feel you, man. I feel you. So, finally, um, sponsors and thanks, obviously, people that have helped you on this journey, particularly towards this massive fight. Uh, obviously, I've got to thank the wizard himself, you know, um, Simon Haycock, fitness factory. He took me under his wing, and uh, and we're just getting more and more out of working together. You know what I mean? It's it's like we like this. You know what I mean? It's 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 a good partnership. We're right now sponsors. Here we go. Um, the Davis Brothers Tree Services, uh, South Midland Tree Services, Palmer Bulls um, Dog Breeding Company, uh, Amira's Pet Pamper, which is a dog grooming company here in Birmingham, which which I love. You know, it's local supporting local. You know what I mean? It's I love that. Um, Mark Simcox is my physio. He's he's sponsored me as well. Uh, my bosses and where I work at Deucey's, Deucey Traffic Management and the Deucey Group, you know, they've uh, took the time to allow me to, you know, they're going to give me time to train the last the last part of my camp, you know what I mean? So give me the time off and stuff. Um, who else? 
I've just got bagged a new one with Steve, uh, Steve Butler. Um, he's a guy that trains with me in through the circuit tonight. He runs his own uh, civils company. Mm. He's uh, so a big shout out to Steve. Oh, who have I missed? Huh? SAS, yes, safety assured scaffolding. My pal, my boy, George Forth. <laughs> he's, um, he's, he's sponsored me again. Um, mm? Munchbox Crawley, yes, this is a oh, this yeah. is people, right? I can't thank these guys enough, right? Because these guys could have withdrew their services mm. from January, right? So I explained the situation, and these guys, right, have gone above and beyond for me. Um, so I want to give a big, big thank you to Ben uh, um, Munchbox Crawley because he's, like I said, he could have pulled the service, he pulled the services, but he said no, no, we'll carry on. So, and these meals have helped me a hell of a lot, you know what I mean? So, uh, you got anybody else? Oh, I don't know what I'm thinking about. Anyway, I've, if, I've, <laughs> if, I've, if I've missed anyone, right, you'll all be all over my T-shirt still. Like I said, I'm going to still honour my sponsors from the January show. Yeah. Anyone that knew that wants to jump on board can still jump on board, you know what I mean? I'm still taking on the sponsors and stuff. So, but anyone that sponsored me on the last show, for sure that I will be still representing their brands mm. all over my t-shirts, banners and stuff. So thank you to everybody that's took the time and supporting me. So Brilliant. tune wow. in. You're going to yeah. see Birmingham's second world champion, Junior 11, second world champion. Trust me, he's coming. First ever heavyweight champion, right? <laughs> it's a big one. It's a big one. As I said, you, you know, you're not going to be able to see this too often. Seems like it's a little bit of a rarity in bare knuckle boxing. The world heavyweight title is, it was vacant for so long. It's back on the line. And honestly, you do not want to miss this fight. So, Dan, thank you for your time. And I'll see you on awesome, fight. George. Yeah, man, you sure will.